Ladies and gentlemen, and every other beautiful individual and entity, my name is Maximum Austin, and I'm just going to go ahead and just spoil Doctor Strange for you, okay? Okay. Spoilers for Doctor Strange are ahead, so if you don't want to hear any spoilers, plot beats, or larger continuity things that could potentially ruin your experience with the film, I say opt out of watching this video under the circumstances of already having seen the film or simply not giving a piece of hell cow crap about the Mystic Masters momentous movie. One most certainly does need the eye of Agamotto to make sure that they haven't seen these spoilers. Okay? Okay. MCU nods. In terms of little easter eggs in Doctor Strange, there are some to be had. In several New York skyline shots, you can see Avengers Tower in the, uh, around the middle of the Manhattan Island area. <sighs> Listen, guys, I'm not familiar with the area or any version portrayed in any Marvel artifact, so shut up. But the film's distinction as a Phase 3 Marvel Studios movie begs the question, how can Avengers Tower still be a thing when the team was located to a different part of New York at the end of Age of Ultron? More specifically, a compound formerly operated by Stark Industries. For silly nerds like me, it seems plausible that the events in Doctor Strange take place sometime after the first Avengers movie. Because remember Wong's comment about the Earth's mightiest heroes that is in the trailer and also in the movie? The Avengers protect the world from physical dangers. We safeguarded against more mystical threats. But before Age of Ultron, because of the inclusion of the tower, that is presumably still functional and operative. So it makes sense. Yeah, there's a line of logic here. Strange could have been studying the mystic arts for the majority of Phase 2, but the film's events could have ended sometime before Captain America the Winter Soldier due to a name drop by a character with ties to Hydra. In Cairo, the undersecretary defends a high school valedictorian in Iowa City. Bruce Banner, Stephen Strange, anyone who's a threat to Hydra. Either that, or Hydra was interested in a world-renowned neurosurgeon for some reason, I imagine. Possible consultant on how the human mind physically works to enact perfect control over an increasingly rational World War II captive? I don't know. If it's featured in like a comic tie-in, that might be the case, but this factoid suggests that Doctor Strange pre-credits takes place after the first Avengers film, but sometime before Captain America the Winter Soldier. Or that was just a mild continuity error on part of the Cap 2 creative team. No biggie either way, but it's a little interesting. We also get to see the Microverse, as explored in Ant-Man when Strange takes a trip through all of reality by the Ancient One near the end of Act 1 of the film. See any Janet Van Dynes in there? <laughs> I'm sorry. The Ancient One's fate. Hey, Tilda Swinton made a cool martial arty farty woman, huh? Doctor Strange deals with big philosophical ideas and it does that with the introspection of one's relationship with a finite existence. The Ancient One, after dealing with visions of her own death and living for what has to be centuries, finally lets her spirit go after an impalement and subsequent multi-story fall onto concrete from the villain, I forget his name, unleashing her grip from a malicious eternal entity far from Earth. Again, I really dug the Ancient One in this film, and she's not a bad character, and I dig Tilda Swinton's interpretation of it. And one of the unique figures from the film is that she's a female character that has strong points about her, but also has a fear of death and anxiety. Specifically, anxiety on her place within existence. It was an interesting arc, and her death, being different from the typical women in Refrigerator's passing, is that it meant something for her character, was handled in a great way, and didn't solely occur just for Strange's development exclusively. A character does mention her background as being Celtic, and I don't believe it was accurately stated how old the character is, but I imagine her like existing in Neolithic Europe, being there when like Stonehenge was built, maybe document some scrolls of Beowulf doing that, stuff like that. That'd be cool. I would love to see her story expanded upon, if not already in a comic show or film. Cool stuff. But what evil entity was she feeding off of, you might ask? The Dreadlord Dumamu. Yeah, the whole big otherworldly force that threatens Earth is a version of a classic Doctor Strange baddie, the Dreadlord Dormammu. Even though he's portrayed as just like a giant head in space in his own dimension that is constantly in check by the mystics and the Ancient One in particular, with the character being a big cosmic influence and him having complex relations with the villain and the Ancient One and having the character being voiced and portrayed by Cumberbatch himself, no really, he does fit into the theme of death being an inevitability and how it can be spiritually and mentally conquered quite well. It's beautifully done in that when Dormammu has his energy flowing through Hong Kong at the end, Doctor Strange using the <laughs> but being no match for the Dreadlord creates a time loop where he gets disintegrated, crushed, strangled, obliterated, impaled, and any other gnarly verb one can conjure up, thus having control of death, in this case Dormammu, while in a sense succumbing to it. It's symbolism for Strange's growth. Come on, people. 
It's a cool idea, even though it kind of makes a film a hard sell when it comes to a younger audience with depictions of, like, medical procedures and people being beheaded, hurt, and disgustingly massacred, but I guess that's what you get when you hire a horror director for your supernatural superhero movie. Yeah! Exorcism of Emily Rose Morlock! Exorcism of Emily Hose! I'm done, I'm sorry. Oh, and just for your comic nerds out there, I think Dormammu has a look that I think think is unique in this version so no flaming head in the sense of like ghost rider or whatever which i don't see why they just can't have characters have similar motifs and aesthetics even if they're unrelated it's nerdy nitpicky stuff but if marvel wants him to be a villain of a world at stakes film like an avengers or guardians film they can probably put him in a jumpsuit or whatever what have you well at least i got my marvel vs. capcom 3 main in a feature film that's something this planet is mine and now you will die the Eye of Agamotto. The Eye of Agamotto, a classic strange artifact that can manipulate time and see across all of reality, think a crystal ball in the traditional magician sense, does appear as sort of a high caliber tool used by the mystic masters in the film. Strange gets a hold of it near the middle of act two and decides to dink around with it and it doesn't really factor into the story later until like the third act where it just so happens to be on Strange's person. It can manipulate the chronology of objects and the user and it looks like the matrix of leadership from like that Transformers movie from uh, 1986 a bit. It's a thing, you hold it like a bicep exerciser thing, you know like it is mentioned that the device is housing an infinity stone with the color being green and obviously incorporating the manipulation of time with the stone. Well, that's five down, one to go. Will we see one in Guardians 2 or Thor Ragnarok? Will the final gem be the one to give Captain Marvel her powers? Only time will tell. I'm fairly confident that these stones weren't housed in character-specific things like Loki's scepter, Vision's forehead, or any strange artifact in the comics, but these films are part of a large adaption, so it's all good. The Cloak of Levitation. <sighs> well, this was news to me. At least in this version of the character, Doctor Strange cloak is sentient, can move on its own, and it's pretty dang funny when it comes to the Doctor's aid by strangling a baddie to the floor. Even though it gives Strange the ability to fly, as briefly shown in the film, he forgets about it in a scene where they're chased through a version of New York where he could have used it. Oh well. After the film's opening weekend, it was talked about by the filmmakers that the character was inspired by Rocket Raccoon and Groot of Guardians of the Galaxy. Sort of like a non-human computer-generated character interacting with live-action actors. Which is fine by me. I love silly things like that in fantasy and science fiction films. And speaking of weird things in New York... Stan Lee cameo. Strange and Mordu are slammed into a bus where Stan Lee is comically reading a newspaper unaware of the situation happening in about a dimension away. It's fine. It's funny. 10 out of 10. He's making millions. Astral. Astral kicking sequence. In the middle of the movie, Strange is stabbed and teleports to his former workplace in New York and guides his former girlfriend to repair his wound via astral projection whilst fighting a Dormammu mook at the same time. The Ghost Dad remake is weird. It's fun and a unique use of the character's powers and skill set. Great suck. End credits, baloney. Yay. In the middle of the credits, taking place sometime after Age of Ultron, remember, Strange is wearing the gloves to cover his damaged hands now, where he and Thor, reprised by Chris Hemsworth, are discussing his and Loki's appearances in New York in Departure from Asgard, in which they are looking for their father, Odin, who has gone missing since the events of Thor the Dark World. Thor and Strange work out a partnership, and the Doctor gets up to start looking for the ruler of Asgard. The thing to take from this, aside from it being a tease for Thor Ragnarok, is that Doctor Strange was intended to be sort of a consultant for the other heroes of the Marvel Universe, so it's a nifty little thing to see here along with the general live-action crossover stuff. Considering the change in Strange's appearance and reputation, he's wearing the gloves. And also, why would Thor and Loki venture back to Earth for assistance from a still somewhat inexperienced Sorcerer Supreme? This does offer credence to the theory of the film taking place in between the two Avengers films with the after credit stuff taking place sometime after Age of Ultron or during Civil War. A post credit scene reveals that Mordo, having left the Nepal-based Karmartage, stealing the magical power and the ability to walk from another disciple of that school, in this case a New Yorker who studied there to fix his legs and walk again, who happened to be the one to give Strange the info about the place. Mordu makes the man disabled again, claiming to rid the world of magicians after feeling betrayed by the Ancient One, Strange and Co. for drawing power from Dormammu's dimension and using the Eye of Agamotto to save the world from a possible fate with its time-bending capabilities respectively. Jonathan Pangborns, the victim here, his fate is unknown, either left alone by Mordo or killed by him. 
Alrighty, say it with me now, kids. Doctor Strange 2 T's. Mordo is a traditional Doctor Strange villain in the comics, so yeah, we will see him again. But it will be a while before that time. Hopefully, since he got some development in this movie, we should get a pretty rounded antagonist for the sequel. Right after about 15 movies for Marvel to try and do that, getting these weirdos to cinema. Yes, guys, I'm aware of Loki and Kingpin. Yeesh. So, anyway, that's the things I've caught on my viewing of Doctor Strange, and whatever stems from my personal mental well of nerd knowledge. Hey, this was fun to make. I should do more videos on lore and universe construction in popular fiction sometime. More fun continuity stuff. If there was anything I missed or there was something that you thought was cool, feel free to comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like and maybe a share and maybe feel free to subscribe if you want to stay updated with what I do on this website that you're watching. And it's also kind of more of this thing. Just talking about film, popular culture stuff, that sort of deal. If you want to watch my initial review of 2016's Doctor Strange, feel free to click the box and I'll see you guys later. I'm Maximum Austin and always remember to keep being confident and you enjoy your day. Excelsior.